Hello everyone, welcome back to the news desk. We've been joined here as ever on Pro Tour lunchtime on Sunday by the director of Global Organized Play for Wizards of the Coast, Ellen Bergeau. Welcome as always to the show, Ellen. Thank you for inviting me. Rich. Oh no, it's great to have you here. You always come along with lots to tell us, lots of exciting stuff. And this time around, we're going to talk about the world of the World Magic Cup and the WMCQs, the qualifiers for that mm -hmm. amazing team global event. So what's going on in the world of the World Magic Cup? So first off, the World Magic Cup is really a unique event, um, not only because of the team format, but also because we have you know, just like 73 countries who are competing for the title. It gives that very unique feeling, and especially because for a lot of the teams who are playing you know, in that tournament, it's their yearly opportunity to play on the big stage. So we are paying a lot of attention to the tournament, and year after year we have been looking at just like ways to improve it, just like both for the players and also for the viewers, because it's also important. We know that all the fans at home you know, are cheering for their teams. They certainly are. Mm -hmm. All right, so why don't we get to it then? Let's begin. What's going to happen on day one? Let's take a look for you. So it's seven rounds of Swiss. Well, that is not a change. That's exactly what we've had before. But that middle line there, Alain, that looks awesome. Yeah, so moving forward, we'll have the top 48 teams who are going to advance to day two. It's a big difference because so far it was only 32 teams who were making the cut. Mm -hmm. So if we've got 48, how are we going to divide them? Well, it divides up neatly into eight groups of six teams each. All right, so 48 teams advance. Let's talk a bit then about day two, because day two is going to come in two phases if we take a look for you. And this middle bit's quite important. There are going to be no draws on day two. Now, there are a couple of ways we're going to accomplish this. First of all, 60 minutes for a match instead of 50. That means a lot of those back end of the round matches will come to their natural conclusion. But we're also going to ensure no draws on day two. If you want to find out how, I believe, Ellen, there's a sort of companion article Absolutely. to our announcement yeah. now, which everyone can look mm -hmm. at on the website, and we can give you all the details, the, the nitty gritty, if you like, of how we're going to mm -hmm. establish that. But no draws on day two. With that in mind, now let's get to the fun stuff. Here we go. This is what day two begins with. Ellen. So very different structure here. First off, the first, so we have two phases and mm -hmm. we're going to go into these two phases. Yep. Uh, what is important is that the very first round of phase one is a win and in. Right. So the three seed will play the six seed, the fourth will play the fifth, and that means that there are 16 straight elimination matches at the start of day two. It's going to be an hour of carnage on day two of the World Magic Cup, but not if you did really well on day one. Yes, it's a piece of feedback that we were hearing a lot you know, after the last World Magic Cup in Barcelona. And so we were looking for a way to make sure that we reward the teams who are competing very well during day one. So the top two teams in each group will get to buy. So they get to watch from the sidelines while this amazing round plays out. 16 matches to get us down to 32 teams. So we've played a round on Saturday. Now we move into 32 teams. Let's see what happens next. So here we are, this is phase one, it's rounds two through four. And Hélène, how would you most elegantly describe this? Because there's a lot of information on the screen. Give us a nice handy catchphrase for this. Okay, very simple way to describe what's happening at the part of the tournament mm -hmm. is to say that it's a modified double elimination. So in simple terms, you win twice, you're in, you lose twice, you're out. out yes. That's pretty straightforward. So one plays four, two plays against three, and then you'll have two winners, because remember there are no draws on day two here, two winners, two losers. They face off, the winner of the winner's bracket, they're at 2-0, and oh, so they're through and can put their feet up for an hour. The losers of the loser's bracket, they go home. And that will leave for the third round of play, round four on day two, the teams are one and one to battle it out to see who advances. So that is essentially modified double elimination. Win twice, you're through. Lose twice, you're gone. We thought that was such a good idea. Let's show you what happens next. Up next, it's phase two, rounds one to three. Helen, that looks suspiciously familiar. It's exactly the same thing, yes. So two wins, you advance to top eight. Mm -hmm. Two loss, you are just like home. That's very straightforward. Modified double elimination again. So at that point, we will have enough for a top eight. 
What we haven't talked about yet, we've talked a lot about structure, but let's talk formats, Helen, because traditionally this has been an event that is multi-format, and as you can see on screen, it is still... It's still multi-format, but we have also revisited the formats. So as you can see, you know, the first rounds of CL deck, mm -hmm. just like Team CL deck, where mm -hmm. uh, the teams are going to uh, build their decks uh, from 12 booster packs of the expansion that we are going to uh, launch in during the fall. We didn't... Um, you're not going to tell us the name here? Mm, no. Oh, Helen. <laughs> Sorry. Boo. Um, but what is interesting is what's happening afterwards. Uh, so starting round four, mm -hmm. the teams are going to play unifi Unified Modern. Right, OK, Unified Modern. Now, there's a little twist to this, yes. because yeah. traditionally Unified Modern says you can't put mm -hmm. more than four copies of a single card spread across your three decks. But what's the twist that we're going so with? So the rule change that we'll have for this specific tournament is the fact that just like only one deck within a given team can use non-basic land. Right, so if I have three hallowed fountains, for example, in deck A, seat A, I cannot use any non-basics in seat B or seat C, correct? Correct. All right. I understand that. That's pretty straightforward. Once we hit the top eight, how are things going to play out there? Let's take a look for you. The top eight on Sunday, well, this is, again, pretty yeah, straightforward. Yeah, very straightforward, single elimination, and they are going to play the exact same format that we're talking about you know, mm -hmm. beforehand. Unified, Unified modern, modern. Yep. yes. All right, so, and then again, single elimination means two players out of three have to win two games out of three. You'll still have your coach on the sidelines. You'll still see all the players crammed around the deciding table. All the drama of the World Magic Cup remains intact. Now, I imagine, back at home, you're thinking, well, actually, I'd quite like to represent my country at the World Magic Cup in Rotterdam at the back end of November. And to do that, you'll need to put a queue on the end of WMC. WMC queues, the qualifiers for this. What's going on there, Ellen? So we have also looked at the World Magic Cup qualifiers. And the first thing that was um, seem important, especially because we modified the format of the World Magic Cup, is to reflect that in the formats of the World Magic Cup qualifiers. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is that, although we had announced earlier on that we would have two of the qualifiers being standard and one modern, mm -hmm. we are changing that because the last qualifier, the one in September, mm -hmm. will not be modern. All right, so let's take a look at the dates uh, for those so you can mark these in to your diary, three WMCQs, June 18, 19 is still standard, that's always been true, July 9 and 10 is modern, and then the change, September 17 to 18 is a modern constructed uh, weekend. Now, we've got two days there um, listed for those weekends. Um, Last year, we experimented with some two-day WMCQs. What's the verdict on that experiment? Oh, yes, sir. absolutely. To step back a little bit, um, we were looking at ways to make sure that players would have a good experience. And so what we had been doing, just like we had looked at the um, countries where we were projecting attendance of the World Magic Qualifier being very high, um, so we, we looked at this country and said, hmm, that's probably going to be a better experience if we run these tournaments as two-day tournaments instead of one-day tournament. However, stores and players didn't really seem to like it. So we are going to go back to the situation where the World Magic Cup qualifiers are only one-day tournament in all the countries. Okay, if I haven't managed to qualify, is there still some kind of last chance that can get me in the door? Absolutely. And that's actually also something that we started last year. So last year we had last chance trials. And these tour tournaments that were happening right before the World Magic Cup qualifiers were the chance for a player to either just like get eligible, just like you know, mm -hmm. because they were not having the necessary planes or points, or get a buy. And then what we realized is that the fact that we're trying to accomplish two things with one single tournament right. was not working very well. Okay. So what we are doing this year is that this last chance trial will actually become only last chance qualifiers. All right, so no one no one gets you out of qualifying just because they want to try and Absolutely. get buys. Yeah. That makes perfect sense, but what if I'm already qualified and I want my buys, can I still get buys? Absolutely, because you know we were thinking that you know it's something that players are interested in, just like the chance to have a buy. Of course, you know, Hall of Famers and members of the Pro Club will still get their buys, but you know, we also were looking at all the other players. And so the way we are going to um, award buy is going to be based, based on place worker points. So for every country, you will have a first threshold, which is the threshold to become qualified for the World Magic Cup qualifiers, and then a second threshold, which awards you a buy. And all the details are also posted in the article. Uh, again, you should absolutely check this article out. It will give you plenty of information there. Now, you mentioned right at the start of this, 
Last time round, we had 73 countries, and the number of countries that compete each year can vary. So you've got a sort of special message for a few countries out there, haven't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Because just like the way the World Magic Cup works is that uh, to be able to compete in that tournament, every single country must have a certain number, minimum number, of players who actually qualified for the World Magic Cup qualifiers. And so there is a certain deadline by which uh, the players, you know, we were just like looking at some, um, how many players per country we have. That deadline is actually May 2nd. And we just like are monitoring what's happening in the, uh, the different countries. And so far, six countries are a little bit short. I'm going just like to list them so that the players in these countries can say, hey, that's maybe time just like to make sure that we are, we are uh, becoming eligible. So these countries are Cyprus, we have Ecuador, we have Latvia, we have Luxembourg, Macedonia, and Malta. Okay, um, I just want to go back, Alan, because uh, we want to respond to a lot of you out there who are saying they didn't quite follow um, about the rule with non-basic land. So I just want to clarify uh, one more time for everyone. Normally, you would expect that if your three decks were stacked one on top of the other, this is the your regular unified in a format, that you could play four of any one card spread across your three decks. So my example was Hallowed Fountain. So this is different, this is new. You cannot spread all your non-basics across three decks. Two of your three decks will have no non-basic lands in them. Correct? This is absolutely correct. Okay. Thank you, Rich. Only one of the three decks will have any non-basic land. That is super important uh, to share with you. And thanks so much for all the feedback. We wanted to clear that up as quickly as we could because that is going to change a ton about the way your team builds your decks. All right, so, Alain, I think we've gone through it. We know that we're going to have a uh, unified modern going on. We're going to have this group of death at the front end of Saturday. And we have this double modified double elimination. But here's the thing. If we're going to get to our WMCQ, we love goodies. So mm -hmm. I have to ask you, are you going to give us some goodies? Absolutely. Just like we have a promotional promo card just like for everybody participating in the World Magic Cup qualifier. All right, let's take a look. What are we giving away this time? If you come to your World Magic Cup qualifier, you will get one of these absolutely gorgeous abrupt decays just for playing. If you get to 0-0, zero, zero, you get to the start line. That is what you will have. Um, so. Uh, that is uh, the position there. Um, so, Alain, you've explained it all to us uh, beautifully. Uh, we appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing everyone at their WMC qualifiers and the WMCs later in the year. Alain Bejo, Director of Global Organised Play, thanks so much for being here at the news desk. Thank you, Rich.